world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. You see, I always thought this was a bit of a no-brainer, this one, that it would just be... It's not about being um, offensive to somebody. It's not about nobody wants to be unkind to anybody. Nobody even wants to stop people from carrying out their dream of being an athlete. But there, there are some sort of irredeemable realities about life, and one of them would be that if you were born male and become female and you participate in sport, then you are demonstrably at an advantage. Yes, I would actually just clarify that a male cannot become female. A male can identify as a woman, but you can't change your sex. I'm completely with you. This is a no-brainer. In sport, bodies are what compete, not identities. We don't have competitions by people's voting preference or religion. It is bodies, and sex is very important in distinguishing uh, between you know, bodies and their physical, abil physical abilities. Males have massive physical advantages, and testosterone suppression does not eliminate male advantage. If we look at what actually happens in football, football is a sex-affected sport, which is why it's divided into male, men's football and women's football. Running, for example, males outperform females by around 10%. Jumping, males outperform females by 19%. Height makes a difference, especially in goal, which is where Blair Hamilton plays. Males are on average 9% taller than females. Limb length, males have uh, femurs, their thigh bones, which are 9% longer. Your humerus bone, which is your upper arm bone, 12% longer in males than females. The Q angle at the hip, which is the angle of your uh, femur from your hip to your knee, this is less efficient in females. So males can apply greater force to the ball when they're kicking it. All these things mean that in football, males outperform females, and therefore any male in a female competition is unfair. And you have to ask yourself, in team sports particularly, so, you know, one male on a team means one female is excluded. On team sports, how many biological males on a women's sports team is acceptable? You know, in football, would 11 males out of 11 players on a women's football team be acceptable? I don't think anybody would say yes. Then if you say, okay, what about eight out of 11? Is that okay? Six out of 11. You know, no number of males on a women's football team, to my mind, is okay. Some people would say trans women are not males, but they are born male. They're biologically male. Testosterone suppression does not remove male advantage. So you're saying, because lots of the, the argument that often comes back, Mara, as you will be aware, is that... Look, you know, we, we can do things about testosterone that can be reduced and you have parity and most sporting councils acknowledge, I think I'm right in saying, acknowledge that, that if testosterone, testosterone levels are at a certain level, then they are satisfied that everyone's good to go. Your, your contention is that actually there are other factors. You talked about bones and, and, and things like that as being physical um, realities that can't be changed. Yeah, you mentioned sports councils. So the UK sports councils, UK sport and all the sports councils of the home nations put out a report last September which categorically stated that testosterone suppression does not work. And they said you have a choice. You can either have male inclusion in the female category or you can have fairness and safety for females. You cannot have both. Um, and the UK NGBs, national governing bodies now, are drawing up policies, and they need to respect that guidance. But I think then there are sports bodies, so the international federations like the UCI in cycling, FINA in swimming, world athletics, they also have separate policies, and they are, well, some of them are, I think, looking again at their policies. But again, I would repeat, testosterone suppression does not remove male advantage. Theoretically, if we could come up with something which which removed 100% of male advantage, then we could start to have a conversation. So, where do we? What do we do about the law? That because at the moment the law rightly prevents people from discriminating based on gender. How, how do? Is, is it that that various sports are concerned about? Do the, the club, the, the England's uh, University Women's Football Team? Uh, allowing Blair Hamilton to play is it because they are they they think morally that's correct or because they're scared of a a, a workplace law breach? Well, the Equality Act outlaws discrimination on gender reassignment, but also on sex. So, being a man or a woman, male or female, 
And the Equality Act has a very clear clause on sport which says you can provide for single sex sport. This is a you know this is perfectly fine. So sports the sports governing bodies to my mind need to set very clear policies dividing sport by sex. If you are born male, you go in the male category. If you're born female, you go in the female category. And we need to do away with all this testosterone suppression because testosterone suppression does not remove male advantage and therefore mm. you cannot have fairness. But then, of course, you're left in a curious position where you have somebody, even just physically, who looks like a, 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 fem a female or a male playing in what they would consider to be the, the wrong side. Uh, and that, how, would, how, that would have all shades of other issues, wouldn't it? How people feel or identify or what they think they are is not relevant in sport. Sport is about physical abilities and sex is what matters, male or female. Another option is that separate uh, sporting competitions for trans people is created. Whether that is viable or not with the numbers, I don't know. But sex is what matters. You know, whether you have long hair or wear makeup or wear nail varnish or wear a dress, these are totally irrelevant in sport. What matters is sex. And the, the boundaries, of, the categories of sex exist for good reason, which is that if they didn't, no females would do anything notable in sport. We wouldn't, I wouldn't be on this program because I would be a nobody. Paula Radcliffe, Kelly Holmes, Sharon Davis, Becky Adlington, None of us would have ever heard of these people because if the women's sport category did not exist, women, yeah. females would not achieve anything. Fair Therefore, point. that se the sex categories must be enforced meaningfully, which means males in the male category, females in the Got female it. category. All right. Good talk. Hot talk. Hot talk. Bold talk. talk radio. Listen on your smart speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio.